In our video today, we're going to look at an unnatural chemical compound here called calcium carbide. It has uh, two carbons attached to one calcium atom here, and it is not naturally occurring, as I just mentioned. It's produced in an electric arc furnace from a mixture of lime and coke. The lime mainly consists of calcium oxides and calcium hydroxides, and the calcium from the calcium carbide comes from the lime here. Coke is very much like coal, but it actually has a higher content of water, and it's often the leftover of burning of coal, and that's where we're getting the carbon, these two carbon atoms, from the coke here. Calcium carbide has a really unique feature, and that is, according to this reaction right here, if you mix calcium carbide with simple water, you'll end up with calcium hydroxide, which comes right up here from our lime, it's reproduced, the calcium hydroxide, and then something with the notation C2H2, which is also known as acetylene gas, and hereafter known as A period, G period. And acetylene gas is extremely flammable and explosive. Acetylene gas can auto-ignite at 780 degrees Fahrenheit, which is 416 degrees Celsius. In other words, if you put acetylene gas under about 30 millimeters of mercury pressure, it will reach that temperature from the pressure and it will auto-ignite and explode. So fortunately, that's not something we're going to have to worry about. It burns at a temperature of 5,000 degrees Fahrenheit, or 2,760 degrees Celsius. In our method here, we are gonna work with calcium carbide in a very safe manner because I've never worked with it and I, I just wanna be very careful about how this all goes here. So I plan on taking a plastic water bottle, poking a hole in the bottom, about two to three inches from the bottom or so, so there's air distribution between inside of this plastic water bottle and outside. Second thing I plan on doing is putting some calcium carbide through the top here so it falls to the bottom. This bottle has been dried extremely well. And uh, that calcium carbide, there, it'll be about a gram, and it's the crushed calcium carbide compared to the chunks it actually comes in if you order it. And after the crushed calcium carbide is put in there, we're going to add about two to three milliliters of just plain old water. Let it set for a minute as that acetylene gas starts to form here. And then I plan on taking a flame from some distance and lighting the gas through this small hole that we made earlier. And I'm not sure what will happen. This might just all blow through the top or it might break open the I, I don't know. So this will be all done very, very safely and carefully and from a distance. Um, as I mentioned, the calcium carbide comes in these larger rocks. They're about, I don't know, half inch, and they're just broken up just like rocks or pebbles would be. And I crush them because if you put water on these larger pieces, it will form a settling gas, but in very small quantities because there just isn't that much surface area. So to test it, you really need to have these smaller particles or the crushed um, calcium carbide to get enough gas formed quickly and to understand the reaction between um, a very low surface area to a much larger surface area we are now going to turn this over to Dr. Mr. Butane Fireball. Take it away sir. Hello this is Dr. Mr. Butane Fireball back with you. By golly it's good to see you again. Today we're going to talk about surface area and we're not talking about just any surface area here. We're talking about a surface area on the cube, C-U-B-E. -E. And the cube, is, it's got six sides there, you know, like that many sides. And we're looking at the sides, not what's in the cube, just the sides here. And I know this cube looks like it's got measles, but but that there is a, you know, representation of something that's kind of eaten into the cube a little bit, you know, like it's going to dissolve the cube. That's what that is. That ain't no disease. Let's get that straight right now. No vaccinations necessary. So we got a cube here with six sides, and each side happens to be 10 centimeters. No means like that. So a 10 centimeter cube, you look at that six sides, and you try to figure out what's the surface area of that right there. Well, we can come right down here. We got 10 by 10. So we know that the 10 by 10 is 100 right there, right? 100 centimeter cube, and then we got six sides. So we got 100 centimeter cube, some 50, so 600 centimeters cube. Got like that? Yep, that's pretty straightforward now. Now, when you crush something, or in this case, we're going to take that cube and cut it right down the middle. When you do that, you change the surface area. So if something's eating at it like this, it now can eat at it in a different way, like more times in different surface areas. So we take this right here and this dotted line, we cut that thing right down like right there. See that? So now we cut it. We got one side 10 centimeters, other side 10 centimeters here. But now we got five centimeters. And then we got something on the inside right here. See that? And we'll see right there that's getting dissolved a little bit inside. 
So now that inside part couldn't be dissolved before because it was inside that cube. But now it's on the surface and now it can be dissolved. So that means that if you produce more surface area, something's going to get dissolved faster. So if you have a big thing and you break it down into smaller, smaller pieces, it would tend to say that there's more surface area to work on and that it would dissolve faster. But we're going to prove that to you right now. So we got five centimeters by 10 right here. So that's 50. Then we got 10 centimeters by 10 centimeters. That's 100. And then we got the top, the bottom, the front, the back, and the side. We got one side. We got two sides on the inside right here. We got three sides right here and four sides on this side right here. Okay. Now let's do the mathematics of all this. We got six sides on each of these and then we got two of them. So we got 12 sides. We went from six sides to 12 sides. So you see that's double, right? Yeah, of course that is. Six stuff, two times many. Well, turns out you don't go twice as much in the surface area because we had 600 centimeters squared here. And the surface area of this right here is not 1,200 centimeters squared, which would be twice of that. We got to calculate that. I always talk about that calculation. Let's get to it now, why don't we? So we got the front. The front is a 10 by 5. And we got two front pieces. That's 100. We got the back, which is the same as the front. That's 100. We got the top, 5 by 10, times 2 is 100 again. Then we got the bottom. Well, the bottom is actually the same as the top here. And the top seems the front and back. They're all the same size. Well, got another 100 right there. So right here, we got 400 centimeters squared. However, we already determined we have four sides. One, one on the inside there, one here, and one here. So, we got 10 by 10 is 100 times 4, which is 400. Well, look at that. If you add this all up, it's 100 plus 100 plus 100 plus 100 plus 400. Whew, whew. That's 800 centimeters squared. So when we take this tool and we cut this thing in half, we go from 600 centimeters squared of surface area, you know, just on the outside here, to 800 centimeters squared. And that's an increase there of 133.3%. I did the math right down here. You take 800 divided by 600, you got 1.33 times 100 to get the percentage. And that's 133.3333 kind of forever kind of thing, you know, percent. So that means that if this cube was dissolved in, like, see, this is all getting eaten up on the outside right here. It took 10 minutes. Then this second cube to dissolve with the same kind of stuff working on it would take seven and a half minutes. This would be two and a half minutes faster than this. Seven minutes, 30 seconds compared to 10 minutes. So just by cutting it in half, we increase how fast it is up. I already said that, but just to kind of drive the point home, you know what I'm talking about here. So this turns out to be an issue here because when we're talking about that calcium carbide and we're talking about a big chunk and then we're going to break it into smaller, smaller, smaller pieces, there's a lot more surface, like uh, infinity more. That's not true, but it's pretty high. And then you add that water to it, it's just eating at all those different sides rather than the one bigger one and you get a lot more settling gas. And that's why we're doing that crush stuff, you know? It's all to explain that simple point. But it's an important one. And it covered it all again. Thank you for watching. Appreciate ya. This is our calcium carbide. Uh, you can see they're much larger chunks. They're a lot like little rocks or pebbles, as I was mentioning. And it's much safer to ship it in this form right here. This is what I did, and I crushed it almost to a powder. It's not super fine, but it's like sand, I would guess. And this is going to have a lot more surface area, as was mentioned, than this. And this is what I'll be using in the water bottle. Working with acetylene is brand new to me. I've seen videos. It's very flammable, explosive, and loud. So I made this light stick here. It's about, I don't know, four and a half feet long, maybe, with a lighter on the end there. So that when I pull this on this end, this should happen and at least keep me far enough away from it. Here's my acetylene test bottle here. So it's empty and very dry. I made sure of that. And I just put it on top of a cup to keep it off the ground. Not sure that's necessary. But uh, I put a small hole in here, which is where the square is, about two and a half inches from the bottom of the bottle. And I'll be putting the calcium carbide in here, uh, where it will sit on the bottom. This is the calcium carbide that I crushed from those larger pieces. Probably only about seven or eight grams in there. And I put one gram in this beaker here that I'll be putting in the water bottle. Pouring one gram of calcium carbide into this water bottle. Here's the calcium carbide inside that water bottle again. I put it on a cup like I was saying and I put some weight on the inside to hold the cup down. It's a little windy. A 
water. Okay, this is a test. Here's the water bottle, pretty much unchanged. It's burnt or I guess melted in here a little bit, but uh, not bad. So the second thing I'm gonna do here with the uh, calcium carbide is uh, put a gram in there, which is already in there. I already have the hole put on the side here to light it. It's on the paper cup, but at the very top is this PVC tube, which I plan on filling with some light items. I don't know what they are going to be, but um, I'll put some water in there through this hole to start and I'll use the same hole to light it and then just blast some stuff into the air. I'm stuffing fireproof wadding down here to protect whatever comes out of here uh, and try to keep it from burning. The small objects I'm gonna put in the acetylene can and I guess I'm gonna call it a toy car. Uh, I'm not sure, a tinker toy with a marble on top of it, a really tiny car, some small dude, I guess running to that car, another toy car and a toy jet. I'm ready to go here and at the top of the tube is the jet and you can see one other item down there but they're all in here separated by some wadding some of it's actually just paper toweling but uh let's do this getting the water here i'm going to light it through the same hole And we have success. Just looking through the mess here, and uh, I can see the wadding did get burnt a little bit. That was fireproof wadding. That was the first thing. The paper toweling is fine. I can't believe it, but I found the little man. It's always surprising to me that these water bottles are doing as well as they are. This one's completely undamaged. For the next acetylene gas from Calcium Carbide Project, I'm going to use this bottle. It's tougher plastic. It came from Sprite. And I'm going to mount that on this piece of balsa wood. And I got a couple wheels in the back here we'll put there and then one wheel in the front and see if we can't push this thing along the ground. I built this wood frame here. It's pretty simple. The bottle will be sitting right on top like so and I'll be fastening it with these zip ties. It's finished as far as I'm going to go right now. Uh, it's very basic. We're going to put the uh, calcium carbide in through the main opening and the water so the acetylene gas is formed. Light it through here. Everything we've seen before but attached to these wheels we'll see how far and how fast it goes. Hmm. I really wanted to see this thing hit the ramp. So there is a B6 Estes rocket engine, of course. Let's watch this go. my idea for an acetylene gas rocket um, i'm gonna take a uh, coke bottle probably turn it upside down cut the bottom off which is the top here and uh, glue in here a cap of some sort uh, so it's facing up then i'm going to put the calcium carbide the cac2 in here one gram then i'm going to bring this back down and taper glue it shut so everything's sealed and then number three put water in here when i'm ready to launch it so the acetylene gas is formed and number four is light the gas through the same hole the water came through so here's the design i was talking about so i put the fins on there and just glued them i also had glued inside this little cap here and put the uh, calcium carbide in there and then i glued the top shut here with the best thing i could think of which was uh using silicone sealant because it's so strong and i know it'll bond to the smooth plastic which a lot of things would break apart because the pressure in there is going to build up i put a cork in the bottom therefore I'm kind of reproducing what I did when I stuffed all the things on top of that tube that got blasted out. When this gets full of acetylene gas and I light it, hopefully that cork's going to get blasted out. Take the car. I've got to get the rocket off the ground here, so we'll see how it goes here.
Oh, that thing's pretty janky. Oh, it landed like a uh, SpaceX rocket. But first, it mostly survived. Not too bad, I guess. The dogs are barking again. And this is the end of this type of trial and error uh, with the settling gas. So, thanks for watching.